Okay, um, we now have two speakers. Um, James Lucas is going to speak first, and then um, Li Bing Chen, both are talking about the environment that they've built. Good morning. Um, as I said, my name is James Lucas, and this is Bing. Um, we work for the Faculty of Engineering and IT at UTS. Um, as part of our courses, uh, we run uh, both Cisco and Alcatel uh, courses and also um, certification um, short courses for them. The environment is made up of five specialised um, computer labs. Each of those is 24 to 30 computers um, and they're based on Fedora and Zen. These uh, labs provide practical hands-on um, learning experience for internet networking um, and this includes um, routing, switching, security, wireless and VoIP. Yep, oh no, you've gone too far. Um, so, in a typical uh, networking lab setup, students will use, um, uh, as a group, a couple of workstations uh, running generally Windows for the networking um, and a Linux machine running uh, Cisco Eagle server which provides uh, various network services. Um, from that they'll have physical network uh, connections and serial connection through to uh, racks of uh, networking equipment um, which they will configure as part of their labs. The students need full access to all of these machines um, to install software, reboot, configure the network, run network analysis on it. Um, these computers also have the problem that they're connected to the internet, you'll need access to the internet, but we want to keep that uh, lab traffic um, off the production <laughs> network at the same time. Also, as in any teaching environment, um, all of these technologies are shared by the students, so um, when a student uh, leaves a lab and the next one come in, which is generally with no break, um, we need to be able to quickly reset the environments, change between different environments, um, and uh, you know, it needs to be immediate. We also have the um, extra uh, problem posed by hardware cards such as um, Cisco wireless cards, um, which uh, need to be passed through to these uh, environments um, to use, which is what Bing is going to talk about more. Um, that means uh, the limitation of the previous uh, setup is that we use uh, some uh, add-on uh, just a uh, reboot card to achieve the quick uh, system uh, reset. Um, there's uh, also we when we need to run another image, we have to use a swappable uh, hard, external hard disk to put up to another uh, operating system. And also, this, uh, because of that, we have to uh, frequently swapping the hard disk and uh, the live CD. So we, sometimes we can get into the trouble. So every time we uh, start the labs, we have to provide the academy with extra hard disk and extra CD just for that. So um, around the 2009, when we upgrade the uh, networking labs hardware, so we're looking for another uh, solution. So because we already run the uh, virtual uh, Windows image on our general labs, so we are thinking that we maybe do the same thing on the networking labs. Um, basically, it's like what uh, virtual license can give us is that they can, um, you can provide a clean the environment. This is to be done by we provide each user their own uh, copy on write uh, image, uh, this image file. So um, in this way, that each user, they all the uh, each user's uh, modification will only write to their own uh, copy on write image, uh, this image file. So will not affect another users. Also, is uh, because we use a, a virtual environment or the uh, OS is uh, this image we can put it into the local hard disk, just switch from uh, uh, from a menu. 
Um, because uh, when in a virtual environment, we, the, even the user student, they uh, change the network uh, setting in the uh, virtual machine, we still can access to uh, uh, this VM through the host system. Uh, uh, as uh, James mentioned before, we have uh, some uh, uh, sticking problem with uh, how we do with the wireless level car we use in the networking labs. Um, the way we do it is that uh, we pass through the, the physical uh, PCI pass uh, devices to the uh, uh, virtual machine directly. Um, in order to do this um, in a, a fully uh, virtualized uh, virtual machine, we need some uh, uh, special uh, hardware features in built into the uh, modern computers. This is a uh, IOMU. It's uh, similar like the uh, traditional mem memory management unit. It will translate the um, device visible uh, address to the physical uh, memory address. So we look at that. This is the uh, in, uh, figure we emulate in the uh, uh, lab virtual machines. You can see here is uh, a traditional uh, emulated level car. The virtual machine only sees the emulated level car. All the actual uh, level uh, operation is uh, intercepted by the hypervisor then pass to the uh, uh, physical level devices so that VM mach virtual machine doesn't know what uh, physical uh, level car in the host. Uh, with uh, PCI pass through the uh, PCI uh, devices, the here we, we can see a, a wireless level car. It will, uh, the hypervisor will present the uh, physical uh, devices to the VM and the VM will use the native um, driver to talk to the virtual uh, to talk to the device address of the uh, PCI network card then the IO and you will uh, to the physical actual physical address to finish the operation um, so when we do this uh, setup, we test uh, both KVM and same type uh, virtualization uh, uh, solution. Um, we finally we choose the same because it's uh, widely used and pro proof open source uh, virtualization technology have a very uh, com active community. I think the most uh, famous user will be the Amazon. They, they build a whole uh, uh, public cloud on top of a sand. And also, this is uh, actually the, the main reason we choose uh, a sand over KVM because at the time um, when we set up the, this uh, network, uh, networking labs, mm, the wireless network card we're using is actually sh uh, share the IRQ with the USB controller on the, of the motherboard. And doesn't support the PCI pass through for share IRQ devices. As mentioned before, that uh, we use the uh, QEMU CAL5 formats to, to, uh, to do the uh, user session files. So how we do this, uh, uh, make all this uh, grow up together? Uh, uh, we create a GUI, a simple GDK GUI application called VM Chooser. You will do the uh, user authentication and and the press uh, uh, select menu for the user to select which uh, VM to to launch. Um, this is um. Uh, we can skip that. Um, in the first setup, we use a VNC a viewer as the user interface. And the student uh, has some complaint about the the the, uh, 
the video performance is not very good and uh, uh, using a VNC so we make another make another change to use a VJ pass through uh, basically it's not some uh, like we do on the networking cars we pass through the VJ uh, video car to the VM so the VM can get the uh, near bare metal uh, performance as we use in the uh, uh, host. Um, the one problem with the VGA pass through uh, setup is uh, how can we do the uh, user authentication and let them choose the VM. Uh, the way we do it is uh, we start a, a VM, uh, start a, a daemon at the host, and what it is. We will check that if there's any VM running. If there's no, we will put up a federal VM, which one's the VM chooser. Then user can use uh, the uh, get log into this uh, uh, federal VM, authenticate, and make a uh, selection of the running VM. Then we will pass a, a message back to the, the host. Then the VM uh, starter will pick up the message and f shut down the uh, federal VM, then start the select VM the user you choose. After the user finish and the VM starter will check again and there's because there's no VM running at the moment, it will start the uh, federal VM again, then do another job. Um, besides that, um, we also uh, set up another uh, uh, alternative uh, uh, option for the uh, networking apps. Is since uh, Sen 4.2, uh, they, they support the Spice protocol, uh, which is uh, similar like the VNC, is a remote desktop protocol, um, but it has much better uh, GUI performance than the VNC. And it also um, make the make it possible to uh, for the user to uh, assess the VM through a HTML5 capable browser. Uh, um, next, I will do some uh, demo on the, our setup of the VM chooser. Um, first, um, we need to know. Um, how we do the uh, PCI uh, pass-through setup. Um, you need a system that uh, supports the IOMMU. So, <coughs> and you can see there's a uh, when uh, CM boots up, um, there's, uh, my system doesn't support the IO virtualization. So, but with a system that supported every, um, we see here we say the IO virtualization is enabled. Then um, you need to tell the uh, send that you which uh, device a uh, PCI device you want to uh, pass through. Um, see, um, it's what this script do is actually uh, uh, one uh, send command XL command to. Add the uh, select the uh, PCI uh, card to the uh, uh, send PCI uh, back kernel module. So that in this way, the send aware of which uh, uh, PCI device you 
want to uh, pass through to the VM. And in the same configuration file, here um, you put the, uh, the PCI device you want to pass through in here, which is uh, my system doesn't support it, so I'm coming out. And then you can just put the Um, what we uh, run on the machine, uh, net machine, is we run this uh, VM chooser login menu. Then user just uh, put their and choose the VM from this drop down menu. You can see that we can we can uh, just start the normal uh, VM session. Or we set that to the pristine mode. Let's do that. And after the user click button, it will find up a spice kind. So the, so the user to use can use the spice kind to interact with the uh, virtual machine. Uh, this is the, some reason we, uh, why we choose open source. Uh, we run out of time. Just skip to the question time. 